Hey, Sadie here, founder of Core Strength Vinyasa Yoga. Now, a lot of people think that when I teach, I'm going to just rock out your abdominal wall up in here, but uh, I do, I do, honestly. But that's not the main point. That's a happy side effect of doing the real work for your core strengthening, which is to find that muscle meridian, the deep core line or deep front line, this is the work of Tom Myers, who discovered that we have one interlocking, weaving, communicating line of muscles moving through that inner body deep to the bones, and it is built to hold you up. It's built to give you more power and strength, and the way that you use it is really important. You need to build it from the ground up instead of the sky down like we often do. We're gonna get a little wavy gravy and use physics to our advantage and build an awesome Warrior II today that is unlike any Warrior II you've done so far. If you've never done this work with me, who took that work of Tom Myers, who took my anatomy training, and then the whole field of vinyasa yoga and yoga asana in general, and I mushed it all together in this delicious ball of like yogic cookie dough, and then we eat it, and it's delicious. So I want you to practice this new Warrior II with me, see the difference from the old Warrior II, and I'll explain why as we go. Now the deep core line needs to be lit up in order from the ground up. I teach a lot of this over five days, but what I'm gonna teach you now is just a, a taster, but I think you'll feel the difference. So usually Warrior II, you can even try it with me if you want, is taught by coming to downward facing dog, lifting the left leg up, so already here we're getting strained and disempowered because we have straight limbs and you can't kick that top leg that high, especially if you're cold, but even if you're not, it's just kind of a lock there. And then the exhale will sweep the knee forward and step the foot up. Okay, ew, because that doesn't give you any power either, but we'll get to that in a different video. <laughs> Inhale here and um, let's ground the back foot 45 degrees, that's usual. 45 degrees is what people say a lot of the time, and I don't know how they know your hip joint or leg needs to be rotated at exactly 45 degrees. Not 43, not 41, not 46, no, 45 degrees. Now we don't know what people's rotation need to be back there. To say that is kind of ridic. All right, that's all I'm saying. So here, we already started with a, a weird, stretchy, straight leg back there. Now I used to teach like this too, so I'm not going off on you if you teach like this or do yoga. We all did it. But now when we learn more, we do, you know, as Maya Angelou said, we learn better, we do better. So from here, commonly it's taught to circle up the right arm and come here into warrior two. Now what's happening, I'm gonna grab my mat. What's happening in that warrior two is that with your back leg straight, it's going to lock your pelvis into place and a place that you don't actually want here. So let's show that again. Back leg is locked, you're coming up, the pelvis is gonna be pressed and locked forward. So as we come up, the pressure of the locked pelvis forward because this leg is straight is gonna jam the hip joint and femur bone or thigh bone downward. And that's not good for the joint. I don't know if you could kind of sense into that right now if you're in the pose. The more you try to do what teachers say to stack the pelvis or to like slide the ribs back, the more you're gonna jam right there. So what people normally do is stay a little bit forward to get off of that back hip joint. And then it looks something like this, like you're reaching forward. Now you're compressing and jamming the front hip joint. To come up like that with a wonky pelvis that can't be centered in space without straining one of the two joints is, um, the foundation for the rest of the spine and upper body to be dysfunctional. So what's happening now, usually we'll pour the pelvis forward, right, and, and just kind of open up the chest like this, sit in the low back, lift up the shoulders to try to get the weight of the rib cage off the pelvis and the hip joint specifically, the low back and SI joint. So the body is sensing danger areas here in this pose, even very subtly, even if you know what you're doing, anatomically, come up like that, um, you're probably jamming and not you know, like it, you know, you're, you're jamming, not good. All right, so from here, what can you do? Well, you can tuck your tailbone, right? You can tuck the tailbone, which presses the femurs forward and jams them more. You could draw the rib cage back, as I said, but that's gonna jam it more. You can stick the sitting bones back and then forward. I don't know what people are trying to do with that. Like, you know, so 
you can drop the shoulders, but that's going to drop the weight of the upper body down to those joints too. So the best thing to do is not to do that type of warrior two anymore and to come up in a new way, a way that I'll show you right now. So try this with me and hopefully you'll feel the difference. From downward facing dog, I want you to bend your arms and legs, press into the floor with your hands and feet, lift your belly up, and then lift the left leg high. So that's a nice wave through the inner body line that culminates with the leg up, and you might notice you get it higher that way. There are reasons for that. On the exhale, I want you to bend your limbs, press hands and feet into the floor, lift the knee up, up, get high, and then step the left foot to the left thumb. Now here's where it gets different and interesting and extremely more effective. So you're going to gain about twice or more as much strength and safety in this pose than in the other one by doing a couple simple moves first. So this is all about transitions. Front toes turn inward a little bit, okay? Front toes turn in, back heel can come down naturally. Somewhere that feels pretty good to you. So you see I didn't use an angle. I said plant your back foot down organically on the floor. That's really nice. Now you can bend both legs. Now you can do it from here. I prefer to come all the way to center and actually nearly parallel both feet. So you want your feet, your toes to be facing the same way as your kneecaps and then bend one knee and then the other. You don't have to do this, but this just feels good. I call these ninja lunges. They stretch the inner thighs, part of your deep core muscle meridian. And then come to center. Now, right at center here with bent knees, and of course you could always be here hanging on to the knees or have a couple blocks if the floor is too much. This is great because now you're here, centered pelvis, two open hip joints right between both feet. So you're starting from a neutral aligned place of as much symmetry as you can get here. From here, I want you to stick your sitting bones back and wide behind you. So it's like sticking your booty straight back and wide. This is to drop the femurs back into the joint and give a little width there so we're not going to compress as much. Keep the inner thighs back and wide, keep the knees bent, and now you're gonna start lifting up from that low belly, the point right below the navel. Draw in and up. Back to the low back spine in the front. So we're just zipping up that front spine, keep the knees bent, zip that front spine up, and then reach your arms out like a warrior two stance. From here, turn your front toes forward. So this is my left foot this time. Back heel might come back a little more if that's comfortable. You can just do a knee check, knees and toes in the same line here. You may notice that as you lift it up that way, now your pelvis is way more stacked at center. Mine isn't shoved forward. I came up with bent knees so the pelvis could really move. I zipped up the front spine and unfurled the arms like this. In the last moment, turn the toes and that back heel maybe a little farther back. Just check the hip joint feeling here, the lumbar, the upper body should be lighter and more free and not necessary to keep the body weight off of the hip joints. It doesn't need it now. You're rooted down below, you're centered at the pelvis, and you're light and expressive above. That's how every single asana should be, no matter if you're upside down or right side up. So grounded, centered, free. All right, so we can try this again, break it down a little bit. You can gently bend the back knee, roll it down just a bit, and begin to roll back up into the pose, and then stretch the legs a little straighter. Or you can come up to stand now, pull that energy up from the earth. And on the exhale, keep the pelvis at center. Press out through the palms, I call that fierce warrior. I like to do that a lot in class, exhale. Very freeing. And the resist and the release that we're doing here, resist and release technique is to use the bottom leg and front leg here and then be stretching it as you fold down. Same with the inner thigh of the back leg. All right, so again, Bijasana, you come to center after stepping your foot forward. Wave from side to side. Bend the knees, inhale. Tack the sitting bones back and on the exhale, roll yourself all the way up, unfurl the arms. This time we could take the right foot forward and the left heel back and just feel the difference there. Nice centered pelvis, two open hip joints. Happy low back and sacrum. That's what you want to feel. All right, and then something like a flying warrior, inhale, reach up to fierce warrior. Okay, so watch that you don't lean forward. Just keep your torso and pelvis pretty centered between the legs. I notice my back leg works a lot more strongly too when I do the pose this way. Pretty cool. All right, inhale here and exhale. Now last thing, I want you to circle the hands down around the right foot. Lift the back heel as if you just came 
and stepped it forward from dog. Let's try it the old way, old school way now and see if you can feel the difference. Back foot down about 45 degrees, keep it straight back there, straighten the leg. Inhale, reach the left arm up and back. And tell me if those are as happy hip joints, lumbar, whole pose, if you're working as hard here, or if you're just working certain areas more and they're kind of yelling at you. Yeah. Okay. And so we can come back to center, sweep the feet to parallel. Ninja lunge it, sit bones back, roll up with bent legs, open up. Eventually you can go pretty fast, front toes forward, back, heel back. You get used to it. Feel that pose, nice center. Ground those feet down as if they touch each other underneath the floor. Super great. All right, something like that, baby. Now go rock your warrior two whenever you can in every class you can. Just give it a little bit of wavy gravy, a little flare. All right, take it with you. Namaste.